chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. And uh, we'll begin reading at verse 24. Acts 18. Verse 24, and we're going to have to verse 28. So we're going to finish up the chapter here. Lord willing. It says, <clears throat> verse 24, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. When he was disposed to to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. As I mentioned last, last week, we... We're now beginning Paul's third missionary journey, but before we really get into details about Paul's missionary journey, uh, a whole lot, verse 23 kind of gives us a little bit, uh, you know, if you remember, uh, verse 23 tells us after he had spent some time there, uh, meaning at, uh, at uh, Antioch, where he had been, from where he'd been sent, Tells us he departed, went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. Uh, so, so Paul is out visiting and going back over the different places where he had established works and churches and so on. On this uh, third missionary journey, we find here an introduction to a fellow by the name of Apollos. Um, Apollos being an important person to the early churches uh, were introduced to him here. Um, uh, the Bible says he was a certain Jew named Apollos, who was born at Alexandria, an eloquent, eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. He was, he was a man who, uh, who was a good speaker. Uh, he was a man who apparently knew quite a bit about the Old Testament scriptures all the way up to uh, the baptism of John. Later, later we would read uh, in the New Testament how that some at the church at Corinth actually preferred Apollos above Paul. Uh, if you <coughs> if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter one, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter one. Begin verse 10 and going down to verse 13. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, he says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind 
and then say judgment for it hath been declared unto me of you my brethren by them which are of the house of Chloe that there are contentions among you now this I say that every one of you saith I am of Paul and I of Apollos and I of Cephas and I of Christ is Christ divided was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. So, we see that within the church at Corinth, there were some who were saying, well, I'm of Apollo. Some said that they were of Paul. And so there was division. Some said, well, I'm of I'm of, uh, of, of Peter or Cephas. Others said I'm of Christ. Maybe, maybe, maybe there were some who said those things because some were saved under Paul and his ministry. Uh, some may have been saved under Apollos' ministry. Some may have been saved under Peter. Or maybe, maybe they just liked his preaching better because Apollos was a man who was eloquent mighty in the scriptures whatever the case may be Paul knew about this he heard about it when he wrote to the church of Corinth and of course this is further down the line later on after the events of Acts chapter 18 but I'm just bringing this up to let you know uh, perhaps some later chapters of Apollos' life um, and let you know that sometimes in the preacher's life and in the missionary's life someone who may be younger someone who may be uh, perhaps uh, come up and coming may rise up to a point of being to this to a church where Paul could have got into some sort of competition with Apollos uh, but he didn't let it get to there even though it seemed to have gotten there within the church at Corinth um, in fact uh, he acknowledges that he heard about it right away in the letter to the church of Corinth. And then by the time we get to what we know as chapter 3, verses 5 through 9, look what he says there. Um, well, let's start with verse 1 and, and, and carry on to verse 9, uh, just so we get the full picture here in the context of it all. So in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another... I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And so while this could have gotten into some great competition between Paul and Apollos, it didn't. And Paul says to the church at Corinth, this is somewhere that it shouldn't be among you all. But you've got to understand something. 
Apollos and I are ministers by whom you believed. Verse 5. He says, I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Verse 6. And then you get down to it. In verse 9, he says, For we, for Apollos and Paul, in the context, are laborers together with God. Okay? They were squabbling, the church was, over who was better, Paul or Apollos. But Paul didn't get down to their level. Paul said, no. Apollos and I, we are, we are nothing more than ministers. We're nothing more than water boys and seed sowers. We are fellow laborers. And while we think on that, let us go back to Acts chapter 18 and we see this eloquent man that we're being introduced to here in Acts chapter 18. And although we don't know we don't know how how Apollos felt about Paul, I would imagine that he would have said much of the same thing. I believe we get a, a glimpse of Apollos' character here in this text. In Acts chapter 18 and verse 25, well, verse 24, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This place, Ephesus, We'll not talk much about the town tonight, but keep Ephesus in the back of your mind. You'll remember Ephesus was a place that Paul had been earlier. Um, verses 18 and 19. In, our, in chapter 18, it says, And Paul, after this tarried yet a good while, and took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centuria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him, verse 20 says, to tarry longer with him there, he consented not, but bid them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. So Paul has left Ephesus. Priscilla and Aquila are there. Okay. He's promised to return if the Lord wills. Ephesus, as it turns out, is a very important place for the growth of Christianity, for Paul, for Priscilla and Aquila, and of course, this man, Apollos. 
title of my message, if I didn't give it to you already, is Apollos, Aquila, and Priscilla. Paul's already done some work there. Not much, but some. Aquila and Priscilla have been left behind. And there's this man, Apollos, this Jew. In this verse, verse 25, we're reminded of a couple of things. Verse 25 says, This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. <coughs> this, this man, Apollos, he was eloquent, he was mighty in the scriptures, verse 24 told us. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. But he had some limitations. He didn't know everything. I'm reminded of that. That no preacher knows everything. There's room for growth. We see that in Apollos. We ought to see it in ourselves as well. Even though he was eloquent, mighty in the scriptures, there were still some limitations on what he knew. So it is with you and I. So it is with every man who's ever gotten up in this pulpit or any other pulpit for that matter. Verse 26, And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when, Priscilla, or when, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So Aquila and Priscilla, they heard him preach. He was good. Point number one is they didn't say to themselves, Paul has left us. We're going to wait until Paul gets back before we hear or any preaching. They didn't do that. They they heard Apollos preach. Aquila and Priscilla, they were people of the book. They were people of the Word of God. They were discerning individuals. They knew what was good preaching and what was bad preaching. I believe it is the duty of every child of God and particularly every church member to know something of what good preaching is and what bad preaching is and to be able to discern by the Word of God what is good and what is bad. They heard. They heard this man. And when they heard, they realized he's a good preacher. But, but, he needs some help. He needs some help. You see, looking at what Luke has already told us about him, 
we can we can glean what it was like to listen to Apollos. To hear Apollos preach, he must have been powerful. He must have been a powerful preacher. He must have been eloquent, as the scripture says. He must have been convicting. He must have been zealous. He must have been bold. And those pieces that were missing, and this is the second thing I want us to think about as we think about Aquila and Priscilla listening to him. They could have said, well, he's good, but he's no Paul. And they could have walked away from him and waited for Paul and said, you know what? Paul, there was this preacher that was here, but he's not good like you. And we'll never go back there. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. I believe we can learn something from the way that they treated Apollos. They could have walked away from Apollos and waited for Paul to get back in town and said, Hey Paul, we've got a man down the road that's preaching and he needs you to straighten him out. They didn't do that either, did they? Now Paul could have helped him out, no doubt about it. But that's not what they did. They helped him out. They helped him out. Why? Because they knew the scriptures. They knew what this man was missing. They knew where Apollos needed help. Notice, and he began to speak boldly in a synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. They did it. They expounded to him the way of God more perfectly. Hey, Apollos, you've got the Old Testament scriptures down pat. You know the, 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 the baptism of John. But you know what? There's more. There's more, brother. They didn't pull him aside. He, I mean, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't call him out in public and embarrass him either. No, they pulled him aside. There's a right way and a wrong way to do, do things. They took him unto them. I believe they did this privately. Hey, Apollos, I, I, I almost imagine, and, and I, know, I know this is just speculation, but I almost imagine Aquila and Priscilla inviting him over to their house. Say, hey, will you come over to our house? Have a meal with us. We've got some things we want to share, share with you from the Word of God. Expounded to him the way of God. I don't believe that they did it publicly. They didn't go up and down the Roman Empire telling telling people what a horrible experience they had with with him. No, they helped him out. They didn't make fun of him. They helped him out, you see. It matters what you and I believe. Aquila and Priscilla show us what a husband and wife team can be. Helping out a, a, a preacher. 
can be students of the Word of God and indeed even teachers of the Word. The truth is, you don't have to be a pastor to be a theologian. Every person in this room is either a good theologian or a bad one. You can either be a help to a young preacher or you can be a hindrance to one. They took him unto them and they expounded the word of God more perfectly. And on the flip side, we see their good example, but on the flip side we see the good example of Apollos. What do we know about Apollos? We know what Luke says about him. He was an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. Must be true. He was inspired of God to write it. Was it merely just Luke's opinion? He came to Ephesus. You see. Even though he was an eloquent speaker, and even though he was mighty in the scriptures, he still had a teachable spirit. He was willing to learn from this man and woman who he met that day. He didn't turn them away. He didn't say, you know what? I don't know who you two think you are to try to teach me anything about the scriptures. He didn't do that. He didn't say, don't you know I'm the man of God? He didn't, he didn't say that I'm the preacher. So many are like that, it seems like. But that's not the right attitude to have. He received instruction from the saints of God. He learned something at the hand of Priscilla and Aquila that day. You see, it was no mere accident that Paul had come through Ephesus and left Aquila and Priscilla there. They were at the synagogue when this man named Apollos born in Alexandria came to Ephesus. That was a divine appointment that those three would meet. That Apollos would meet Aquila and Priscilla that day. God set that appointment up. Not, none of them knew it was going to happen. But look at how God blessed. There are people that come and go in your life and in my life. People that we teach and people that we learn from. Sometimes you may be Apollos learning from somebody. Other times, you may be like Aquila and Priscilla teaching somebody. Sometimes in your life, you may be learning and teaching at the same time. But 
But none of it's a mistake. None of it's a mistake. We've got to be willing, folks, we've got to be willing to spend and be spent for the glory of God. We've got to be willing to give And we've got to be learn. We've got to be willing to teach. We've got to be willing to learn. It takes effort. Humility. And grace. Back to our text there in Acts chapter eighteen. Verse 27, And when he was disposed to pass unto Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. By the time he was ready to go on to Achaia, a letter of recommendation was written. Sometimes we get asked, where did our practice come from of receiving and granting letters between churches come from? Well, here's one example. Here's one example of where this idea comes from. When he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. You see that? A letter of recommendation was written by the brethren at Ephesus. So that when he went on into Achaia, yeah, he would explain himself, he would tell of where he came from and all that, but he had this letter from the brethren. In those days, they didn't have phones that they could pick up and call. Mail didn't run very well, you know, that sort of thing. We've, we've, got, it, we've got it made in our, in our day. These letters, these letters of recommendation, that was something. When he wrote, arrived in Achaia, there was no question what his background was and what, what had happened. It was a great help to the church, to the brethren, to the other saints that he met up with. As he preached and as he taught, mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah carried on his ministry. And as we've seen, as we read further, he ended up doing a great work on into having a great amount of influence and being of help to the church at Corinth. Even into chapter 19 right here, it says, and it came to pass the wall of Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. So Paul makes it back to Ephesus. Apollos ends up in Corinth. We see how their lives, how their lives crisscrossed like that. Paul counted him as a fellow laborer. What a great help that Aquila and Priscilla was in the work too. How all these things worked out. In the, in the missionary journeys of Paul, the early churches,
Sometimes you may be in Apollos. Sometimes you may be in Aquila and Priscilla. One thing's for sure, as you go through life, Christian life, you never stop learning, and there's always someone in your sphere of influence who needs to be taught. Be willing, ready, and able to help out where you can and learn from others as you go along. Thank the Lord for the men and the women who come into your life. We'll stop there. Lord willing, next time we'll look at chapter 19.